Will here with WTF Car Reviews, and today we're going to be reviewing this all-new 2022 Audi RS5 Sportback. And huge thanks to Audi Tampa for making this review possible. They have an impressive inventory. I'll leave a link to it below. And if you're in the market for a new premium vehicle in the Tampa area, I would definitely recommend checking these guys out. And for those of you guys who don't know, the RS5 started out as Audi Sport Coupe back in 2010, sitting on the first generation A5 platform, which was released back in 2007. The second generation released in 2018. We already had the chance to review the 2019 pre-refresh RS5. Uh, the refresh came along the following year in 2020. The RS5 that we reviewed, however, was tuned. It had an aftermarket intake and exhaust. It was a sweet, sweet car, but this is an all new 2022 RS5 for the second generation post refresh. The first generation RS5 came equipped with a glorious 4.2 liter V8, which cranked out 442 horsepower and 317 pound feet of torque. However, the second generation still makes with its 2.9 liter twin turbo V6, 442 horsepower, but an increase of over 120 pound feet of torque. We're now making 444 pound feet. Starting around 76,000 bucks, Let's see what we get. So up front, you notice your all blacked out Audi badge that comes equipped on our black accent package for a couple hundred bucks. Forward facing camera beneath, full front parking sensing. I'm really liking that blacked out styling for the grill area. You may notice some fog lights in the corners, but those are for your radar cruise control. Functional airflow in the lower corners, full LED headlamps with a daytime running strip, also LED on the outside of them. Really loving this. I believe Glacier, glacier Gray Metallic uh, paint. It is absolutely beautiful for our black accent package. Again, I'll leave a link right here to show you what that package is really called. We get these beautiful 20 inch rims. They're not blacked out, which is odd for the name of the package, but we do get black accents on the silver rims. 20 inches wrapped in 275-30ZR20, Continental Sport Contact 6 tires. Massive drilled rotors, I'll leave a link right here to show you the actual dimensions of them. Six piston front RS Brembo brake caliper two should really help this 4,000 pound sport sedan hatch, whatever you like to call it come to a complete stop. RS5 badge on the upper right fender area, upper left door area too. It does continue blacked out windows, mirrors, I apologize, LED turn signals on them. The glass fills up just about the entire frame, but we don't get blind spot monitoring on the glass. I'll show you inside where the blind spot monitoring is. All black trim for the windows. I'm liking that panoramic blacked out tinted roof up top. I kind of wish that the black or the glass continue for the entire roof area but still looks pretty clean smart access for all four passengers i'm liking the little black trim for the side skirt area same wheel and tire setup out rear still sitting on 275 30 zr20 Continental Sport Contact 6, some performance tires, so they're not a staggered setup, but the only difference is a smaller brake setup. It's only a single piston uh, for the caliper. We still get drilled rotors though, but they are much smaller. Additional side sensor in the rear area. As we mentioned, we do get the 360. Black lip, also nice daytime runners for the tail lights, brake lights, and the reverse lights are housed right in the center portion of your tail light. Hopefully you guys can pick it up. RS5 in the lower left corner, blacked out Audi badge two, full rear parking sensing, aggressive diffuser, and these exhaust tips are also very bold in diameter. But speaking of the exhaust tips, let's fire up this 2.9 liter twin turbo and hear how she sounds. All right, guys, that was, of course, the sound of the 2.9 liter twin turbo V6 sold by Audi for the 2022 RS5 Sportback. As soon as you figure out the slatch, which is a little bit tricky, we can check it out. And big thumbs up for the struts makes it pretty easy to access. And here you have it, your 2.9 liter twin turbo making 442 horsepower, 444 pound feet of torque, enough to get this around 4,000 pound sport sedan, we'll call it, to 60 in under four seconds, 3.8 seconds, really fast car. Strut tower braces, connecting your strut towers to the chassis. As far as in front of the radiator, nothing up here, but the handling should still be very, very impressive. We can shut this hood right up. Very hot for that metallic gray paint, but we'll take one more step back and get a good look at that front end styling. As far as the interior, really impressive for the Audi RS5. Smart access again for the 
All four passengers actually. The door panel is soft touch up top carbon fiber trim surrounding your aluminum door handle, two person memory seats, lock and unlock, suede Alcantara trim and it's very soft, soft red contrasted stitch leather, auto one touch for all four power folding heated heated mirrors with blind spot monitoring, blind spot monitor sensor right in the inside of the mirror itself, child locks, trunk opening and very solid storage outlined in some soft touch material 19 speaker banging Olsen sound system standard on a $76,000 Audi RS5 with a nameplate as we step inside. Red contrast stitching quilted inserts for these really supportive performance bucket seats, adjustable bolsters, you can recline, drop, lift and slide, massage and four-way lumbar control. The thigh support is also adjustable which is nice for taller drivers, RS etched in the upper portion but as far as the interior itself you can get a good look at your aluminum outline pedals but let's get out of this ridiculous heat it is 96 degrees today in Tampa Florida and I'm already drenched in sweat but the first thing we notice is the Alcantara steering wheel it is optional comes equipped in your $1,500 RS design package and it is very grippy red contrast stitching perfect nine and three solid little 10 and two bolstering notch and it is thick it's not flat bottom i'll kind of expect it to be because a lot of audi cars are flat bottom you get the infotainment adjustments on the left side right side you get our media adjustments you can skip your songs just the volume heated steering wheel and your rs mode we have rs1 auto and rs1 and 2 they both open up your exhaust even in dynamic mode the exhaust is relatively quiet the drive modes are adjusted here we got to close out of all these but right here so you press the up mode we're in comfort and dynamic dynamic gives you a little bit more exhaust noise but i feel like the rs1 and 2 gives you even more but this 12 inch infotainment screen and 10.1 inch touchscreen are all new for the post refresh model and it is beautiful this digital screen right here very configurable you see your power and torque boost gauge in the lower right corner and if you don't like this layout with like the g meter on the left side power indicator with attack and digital speedo in the center you press this view button and check it out now the G meters in the center we get a digital speedo and a, like a linear speedo on the right side with our tack on the left fuel level on the upper right corner upper left corner sorry guys but i personally prefer this screen you can let me know in the comment section what you guys think the paddle shifters are really nice and aluminum turn signals have a satisfying click to them auto high beams auto headlamps rain sensing wipers and our cruise control settings in the lower left stock area we do not get a power tilt and telescoping steering wheel that is a thumbs down for a vehicle in this price range soft touch for the entire dashboard 10.1 inch screen as we mentioned the navigation is google maps i apologize for the glare it's a very sunny day i'll actually try to reposition myself and i'll catch right back with you all right so hopefully you can check out the current screen we just ended up parking in different spots so we're looking at our parking sensor you, you close out of here and you get a full screen Google Maps, unbelievable response. The resolution is excellent. You're literally looking at Google Maps right now. I haven't seen that in many vehicles. I don't know if you guys have, but really impressive feature, great infotainment. We also get vehicle settings. This is an RS car. We get the Audi Drive Select between Dynamic Auto and Comfort. You close out of here, you can take a look at, you can also configure RS1 and RS2 similar to the M cars from BMW. You can take a look at your vehicle temperature, engine oil, sport differential, transmission fluid. You can also check out your deceleration, left, right, and acceleration max G-forces. Tire pressure monitoring is all you can check out through your RS monitor. Efficiency assist, seats, driver assistance, light visibility, parking aid, really a configurable vehicle. Settings, you can see everything that you can potentially adjust. Nice. But we can close out of here. My personal favorites to look at at all times would probably just be this navigation so we don't get lost during this test drive. Beneath that, we get the air vents, carbon fiber trim surrounding this entire lower portion for the interior. Um, dual zone automatic climate control heated, no ventilated seats. That is 100% a thumbs down for a vehicle in this price range. My butt's burning right now. Ventilated seats would be really appreciated. Drive mode select, as we mentioned, trash control you can disable. Automatic parking, you can turn off your parking assist and you can turn off the screen all together but other than that i'll leave it on for the purpose of this review start stop button outlined in red suede alcantara with red contrast stitching for my knee will often hit two cup holders pass through good spot for a phone pushy things good spot to keep your drinks in place usb port no usb c 12 volt right next to it good spot for a radar detector carbon fiber trim surrounding this volume dial which is in a perfect location for your passengers suede alcantara surrounding their gear selector and if you don't want to be using these really nice aluminum paddle shifters you can throw this thing into drive smack it to the right and use the manual shift controls in the improper direction to upshift and downshift but i personally prefer the 
paddle shifters as far as the backup camera, we can check it out right now. Excellent resolution, we get a 360, both have guidance lines and trajectory. You press this button, you can check out the different angles of view. You can see a front facing camera, we currently have a fence right in front of us. You press this other front facing angle over the top, which is great, over the right back where we started, and a wide view from that angle, blind spot so you don't scratch your wheels against any curbs, same thing for the other sets of wheels, automatic parking, and you can adjust between forward and rear facing as well. But We'll close out of here, put this thing back into park. RS, behind the gear selector, electronic parking brake. Doesn't look like there's any auto hold unless it's done automatically with your brake pedal. Nice little storage spot for a key. We currently have the key back here on the wireless charging pad, and that's my Camaro key. That's not this car's key. But never mind on that. The armrest, it's not suede Alcantara, but it's super gushy, soft, contrasted red leather. And we get a wireless charging pad inside, USB-C, but not the most space overall. I would expect you to fit probably five or six iPhones, but as far as cans, I wouldn't expect you to fit any, but you can still fit some car accessories and no issues, and this armrest does slide back and forth and opens up a little bit of extra storage. The glove box, you can open it up, outline and felt, massive, you're fitting at least uh, 20, 25 license plates in there, and it looks like we have a second tier of storage, but that's just faux. The air vents, they continue all throughout. The rear view mirror is frameless and auto dimming, we do not get a camera mirror, unfortunately, but really not a big deal. Panoramic sunroof, as we mentioned, the headliner is very soft. You can open up the shade. Well, we'll open up the sunroof in general, see how far it opens up. So the shade opens relatively quickly. The sunroof or moonroof, whatever you like to call it, we'll see how far it goes out. Wow, pretty far. See if it goes any further. It does not, but pretty impressive. It goes right about to the level of the front seat poke our way out of here it's an unbelievably hot day today in tampa florida sunny and 96 my phones or my camera whatever you want to call it has overheated already three times during this review we have to take a pause and let my phone cool down but other than that that's really about it for this front seat area if we didn't mention to the left of the steering wheel we get our headlight controls outdoor fog lights so i guess those things up front might actually be fog lights interior brightness and the heads up control and overall interior lighting but this does control your heads up display right now hopefully you can pick it up on camera it's not the largest display it's about a seven inch display but you can adjust whether it's high or low so for the purpose of this review we'll leave it up high so when we put on the pov camera you guys can still see it a little bit but that's about it for this front seat let's take a quick look at this window sticker see any features that i might have missed you can pause take a look at all the standard equipment as you mentioned we get the 10.1 inch screen bang and olsen sound system and it sounds absolutely incredible for a base system for a vehicle starting at 76,000 bucks. We do have we do have quite a few options starting with the $600 Daytona Grey Pearl metallic paint, 3400 for the dynamic package which includes this RS Sport suspension plus with dynamic ride control. We'll see how the difference is between comfort and sport once we take it out on the road. RS Sport exhaust, red brake calipers, 3 grand for the RS driver assistance package which includes adaptive cruise control with traffic jam assist, Audi active lane assist, hands-on detection steering wheel, heads-up display with the traffic sign recognition, top view camera system which is your 360 and a park assist for 3000 bucks. 1600 gets us the black optic package which gets us the 20 inch 5 arm flag design wheels forged by color finish i kind of wish they were completely backed out blacked out let me know in the comment section what you guys think but that's coming equipped on a 1600 dollars package wrapped in 275 30 summer tiles tires all throughout the high gloss black exterior trim and mirror housings is also included on the package otherwise you'd be getting body color so personally i probably skip this package from if i was building up a rs5 sportback 1500 for both the navigation and the RS design package, which includes the Alcantara covered steering wheel, Alcantara covered shift lever, and center console. But the center console does not feel Alcantara. That feels leather wrapped to me. I'm sorry, guys. The RS logo floor mats are also included on that package. Not quite sure if you guys can pick them up. We also get the seat belts with red edging included there as well. Dynamic steering for 1150. That basically just lets you keep your steering wheel centered on the road in situations when there's crosswinds or uneven pavement so it's a pretty cool feature side assist for 500 audi side assist with pre-sense rear matte alu optic mirror housings 300 for the black audi rings and badges 1100 for the destination totals us out a tick under 91,000 bucks we get a lot for this car but that's pretty expensive for a luxury sports center with no cooled seats so we'll take it out on the road see if the way that this vehicle performs makes up for its sort of lack in total features 21 mpgs combined and 18 city 
25 on the highway but again outside of not having cooled seats and a pan and a power tilt and telescoping steering wheel i love absolutely everything about this interior let's check out the back seat real quick see how much space is offered back there and then check out the trunk and take it out for a drive again smart access for the rear as well soft touch up top aluminum door handle two banging olsen speakers on the door panel carbon fiber surrounding the door handle super soft alcantara with the red contrast stitching around the leather uh, the lower portion is still a soft touch, solid storage too, Bang & Olsen speaker as we mentioned. The padding for the seats goes out almost to the frame. We still get the quilts, red contrast stitching, and solid bolstering for the bottom and top portion. I'm a little bit over 6 feet tall sitting behind my seat settings and I still have at least 2 inches of overall legroom, plenty of space for my feet, cargo net behind both of the front seats. So I'm liking it back here. I would personally take this over the RS4 only because I personally prefer this vehicle's exterior styling. We'll take one more walk around and check it out. Third zone climate control, two USB ports, 12 volt, two heated rear seats. But again, it would be nice to get cooled seats up front. Air vents too, of course, the center cubby. You can poke this thing out and we get two cup holders as soon as you figure out how to access them. Not quite sure. Center console, you can fit a bunch of phones in here. Oh, okay, so the cup holders are taken out one by one individually. You can easily fit, I would say, five or six iPhones with no issues. We can close these cup holders right up and the leather for the armrest is decently soft. It's a little bit softer than my Camaro, but not by much. We can close this thing right up. The interior lighting is LED. As far as the interior lighting, it's tough to tell because this moonroof is closed, but we can reach our way up here. doesn't seem like it opens automatically. Hopefully the sunroof doesn't open behind it, but as far as the light, it's impressive. That moonroof is pretty large, goes all the way out to the second row just about, but as far as the trunk, we can hop our way back there and check it out before taking this thing out for a drive. All right guys, so underneath the Audi badge, you press the button and we get an auto opening tailgate hatch, whatever exactly you would like to call it. We get tunnel covers for the glass so nobody walking by sees what you have in your tailgate area, but it is massive. This is like a compact SUV. The Q5 Audi really doesn't have much less when it comes to cargo space. You're fitting golf bags, you're fitting suitcases with no issues. You fold those 40-40 folding seats down, you can fit a 70-inch seat back here with no issues. Perfect spot for groceries with those nets. You don't have to worry about anything flying around. This area is mostly for just car accessories and this is removable. It exposes your fuse box. Probably should close that thing away. The secret storage, we can open up this little cubby compartment. We get our spare tire. It's not a full size, but still nice to have in some emergency situations. Hooks and tie downs too. Really impressive to close up this tailgate. You simply press this button. It closes automatically just like it opens. And as soon as it does, We'll do a quick little walk around, get one last look at this super sleek side profile, the red accents for the brakes, side badges, and the front calipers are absolutely enormous. But that's about it, guys, for the interior and exterior of this all-new 2022 Audi RS5 Sportback with a few options. Let's take it out for a drive. All right, guys, now we're just about seeing everything we need to see with the inside and outside of this all-new 2022 Audi RS5 Sportback. Let's take it out for a drive. Starting it off in just dynamic mode, not the RS mode. We'll lean into it about halfway. Oh my gosh, yeah. Woo! Yeah, this thing is fast. Let's try it out RS mode. Woo -hoo -hoo. Those rev match downshifts are nice. We'll throw it in faster than we should. Handling is amazing on the gas. Oh yeah. Guys, this thing can definitely get up and go pretty well. All right, guys, looks like we have a chance to try an acceleration off the line on the gas. Woo! Wow, we can, let's go off this way because we're not going to catch up to the speed. We'll slow down. All right, guys, this looks like a good spot to try out an acceleration off the line. We're not going to launch it or anything, but first gear, we'll let the computer do its thing. And on the gas, boost. Woo! Wow. Yeah. This thing can really get up and go. Try a downshift. Yeah, it puts you in your seat and it takes off. And the ride quality is surprisingly good. You hit, you hit those manhole covers and barely feel anything. And the handling still remains downright excellent. All right, take me a step out. Whew. All right, guys. First gear, on the gas. 
yeah <laughs> what a fast car but we'll try it out one time in comfort mode i think we've had plenty of fun in dynamic so comfort put it back into just automatic wow it gets so much quieter the throttle gets a lot less sensitive this is about halfway wow what a difference it took about like two seconds for the boost to kick in we'll try to like really step on the gas right here oh yeah it's still very fast but dynamic 100% makes things a lot more aggressive it still sounds pretty good too but again with this rs performance exhaust dynamic mode will really open it up but one more time let's try it out in dynamic just to call it a day second gear Ooh, those rev match downshifts are impressive looks like we got some space we'll try one more first gear let's go oh yeah yes they can flat out rip but other than that we can take this thing back to audi of tampa and again huge thanks to them for making this review possible all in all guys this is a really impressive sports sedan i'll call it a sports sedan i understand it's a hatch but it is such a blast to drive the interior quality is absolutely phenomenal comparing it to let's say a bmw m3 i personally prefer the interior in this car the layout i prefer the tech in this car too however the bmw m3 that we reviewed in this channel did come equipped with ventilated seats and it was only a base model so i would expect ventilated seats from the audi rs5 but again outside of that i have absolutely zero complaints with it we reviewed a tuned rs5 with an exhaust and an intake and it really turns this car around if you're an enthusiast you want a high performance high luxury sports sedan this is about as good as you're going to get considering the money uh, but other than that huge thanks to all you guys for watching i had a great time making this video again huge thanks to audi of tampa for helping me get the keys to this absolutely fantastic rs5 sportback if you're new to this channel please subscribe if you've already subscribed thank you so much you guys know i have endless gratitude for all the subscribers you know the channel is just not possible without you guys and i really appreciate the constant support but again if you haven't subscribed yet please subscribe leave a like too it really helps me out the youtube algorithm that's how these videos get promoted to new people leave a comment let me know what you like let me know what you don't like leave a comment let me know if there's any specific cars or trucks you'd like to see reviewed in this channel too and i'll definitely try to get those videos for you as soon as possible but other than that again thank you guys so much for watching and i hope all of you have a great day